Hello, listeners. Welcome to the maiden edition of the Ensign podcast. On this podcast, we discuss important commercial and legal issues in a simple and relatable way. Our guest today is Amina Kagwa. Amina is the head of office of ENS Africa Ghana. She is also the partner in charge of the corporate and commercial practice. Amina has over two decades experience in that practice area and is the perfect guest for the topic we have today. Welcome, Amina. Thank you, David. Today's topic is redundancy. And I'll jump straight into it by asking the first question. Amina, what's redundancy in simple terms? Redundancy occurs in two, two scenarios under Ghanaian law. The first scenario is where an, an, an employer undertakes internal restructuring or introduces changes in its business operations, which lead to employees being terminated. We say a redundancy has occurred. We can call that redundancy type one. Redundancy may also occur where as a result of a business closure, employees are laid off or as a result of a business arrangement, employees lose their jobs or are transferred to another employer under terms and conditions that are less favorable than the terms and, condition, uh, terms and conditions that they originally had. We can call that redundancy type two. So, Amina, if an employer wants to undertake a redundancy, what are the basic steps they must take, if any? There are a number of steps that an employer contemplating redundancy must take. The first step is that the, the employer must notify the employees that are likely to be impacted by the redundancy exercise three months ahead of the time that the redundancy will be undertaken. So the employees that may be are likely to be affected must be given three months notice. If the employees belong to a union, the union must be notified three months ahead of the time. And if they belong to other employment or employee association, that association must also be notified. The, the, the other step that the employer must take is to notify the chief labor officer that it intends to undertake a redundancy exercise and indicate to the chief labor officer the category of employees that are likely to be impacted by that redundancy exercise. The chief labor officer is an officer in the, is a, is a government official in the labor office. The third thing, and probably most important, is that the employer must pay the employees that are impacted or affected by redundancy, the redundancy pay. The law does not define redundancy pay. And what most employers do is to define redundancy pay or package in their employment documents, such as um, employee handbook, uh, the employment contract, or other employment document. If the employer does not has not defined the redundancy pay or package in their employment document. The employer is required to negotiate with the impacted employees to agree a redundancy pay. The last thing that the employer is required to do is to notify the chief labor officer that the, the redundancy exercise has been concluded. Okay, Amina. So for a long time, Lawyers interpreted the labor law to mean that of the two types of redundancy, one did not entitle the affected worker to redundancy pay. A recent Supreme Court decision appears to have changed that position. What are your thoughts on how the Supreme Court case has affected how we see redundancy pay? So David, that is correct. So because of the way the law is on um, redundancy is written, the law was interpreted to mean that there is no obligation to pay redundancy pay um, in the case where the employer is embarking on redundancy type one, where the redundancy is as a result of the internal restructuring. What the Supreme Court case has clarified is that employees that are affected under redundancy type one 
must be given some form of compensation. And that can be monetary compensation or that the employer finds the employee's alternative employment. The difference is that, and, and maybe I should clarify that, in the case of redundancy type two, which is where the employer, the, the business closes down or employees are transferred to another employer or are terminated because of a business arrangement, the, the payment of redundancy pay is mandatory. So it is mandatory under redundancy type two for the employer to pay redundancy pay. So the clarification that the Supreme Court case has brought relates to redundancy type one. Okay, I mean, moving on, the law requires an employer to take steps to soften the blow of redundancy on the worker. In your opinion, must that always result in the employer paying money to the worker? Can't the employer, for example, help the worker to find a new job or help the worker to acquire a new employable skill? So, so David, the requirement to take steps to mitigate or suffer the blow of redundancy on an affected employees is, a, is relates to redundancy type one. And, and, and to the question, so yes, that, that, that requirement, the requirement to take steps to mitigate the effects of redundancy on employees that are impacted doesn't have to end in uh, payment of money. It can be other um, steps such as helping the employee to find a job or moving the employee to another job within the organization. However, as you would understand, that would be um, a bigger responsibility for an employer to take of finding and taking steps to find um, employment for an employee, particularly if they do not have employment within their or other jobs within their, their organization. And so what mo most employers would do is to pay a monetary compensation, which is easier for them. However, other steps that in our experience we see that employers take to soften the blow uh, include, for example, um, for example, uh, keeping the employee on their medical insurance so that employees can continue to access free medical care, um, permitted employees who have to work during the three months notice period to go um, to take time off to find alternative um, employment or attend in work interviews or um, you know apply for jobs and, and things like that. Um, or, so really things that can can help the employee. Um, other things that employers do is to um, assist the employee with uh, finding or find a counselor for the employee to assist to assist them and and, and with counseling. So really uh, small things that matter at the time when an employee is losing their job. So it doesn't necessarily have to be payment of money. Although I must say that when an employee is being laid off, perhaps their focus is survival and therefore paying them monetary compensation uh, would also be preferred by the employee, especially yeah. uh, where you know it is more beneficial for them to take the redundancy than take a job that will probably not pay them as much as they had. And that brings us to the final question. Amina, in recent times, certain employment practitioners have blurred the lines between redundancy and mutual separation. What is mutual separation and how different is it from redundancy? Mutual separation is when an employment contract is terminated by mutual agreement between the employer and the employee. So in essence, one party to the employment contract approaches the other for one reason or the other. Uh, for, for example, um, if the party comes to the conclusion that the employment relationship is not working, the party approaches the other party to ask for a mutual separation rather than a termination in terms of the employment contract. So in the mutual separation, the parties would sign a mutual separation agreement under which the, the employee is paid a compensation. And, and in return, the employee grants the employer waivers that assure the employer that the employee is not likely to take any legal action in respect of the employment. So the employee goes away with a compensation and the employer goes away with um, the assurance or peace of mind that um, the, the mutual separation that the employer has signed with the employee is the final um, separation document in respect of that employment relationship.
So it's a win-win situation in the case of a mutual separation. The difference between a mutual separation and a redundancy is that in the case of a mutual separation, the employer is free to hire a new employee to replace the employee that they have exited. Whereas in a redundancy, because the employer um, laid off the employee because they had employees that they did not need, the employer cannot hire new employees to replace employees that were laid off as a result of redundancy. So that's the difference. Great. This has been a truly informative discussion on redundancy, Amina. Thank you so much for making the time to join us today. Thank you, David. And listeners, thank you too for joining us. Do join us on the next episode of Ensign, the podcast, coming up soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.